good afternoon. Uh, first off, thank God everybody's okay. Uh, everybody's gonna be able to go home after this incident. Um, I want to thank Pasco Fire Rescue. Uh, I go back to it. We had an incident two weeks ago. The partnership with them has been phenomenal. And when we're dealing with these type of situations today, with somebody who is threatening to blow up a house and possibly other houses around it, you know, that fire rescue there, that partnership is phenomenal. So I want to thank them for that. And also Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office Bomb Squad. Uh, with the situation we're dealing with today, as we were two weeks ago, you know, these are very dangerous situations. Being able to have their technical assistance and in this situation, you know, the gentleman threatening and blowing things up. That's why we need them here. So we appreciate that partnership. So thank you, Sheriff Cronister, for that. You know, this is all preliminary information. Still, the investigation is going on as to what we're going to find and you know what it will be stated to us. But at approximately 9:30 this morning, Pasco deputies were called to a home for a suspicious incident on Fairmount Drive. Uh, it was reported by the victim that Eric Dykstra, date of birth 11 1966, was in the home. The victim had a no contact order against Dykstra, and let it be stated, Dykstra, Dykstra was just released from the jail. Um, he was there for domestic battery and there for theft. And then he walked home and he went to this house where he violated the no contact order by being in that house. Uh, the reason why the victim knew that is that she had cameras inside the house. She had just been looking at the house, looked inside on the cameras and saw he was in there and notified law enforcement. Um, as the deputies arrived, Dykstra fired around in the house. Uh, the deputies then took a defensive position, a tactical position to make sure they were safe. Um, and then they started calling people out to the scene. Uh, Dykstra then went on to make a statement that he was going to blow up the residents with gas and propane tanks to deter the deputies from uh, going inside the house. Um, we evacuated the nearby houses. So we go back to that part about having a camera inside the house. Because we had the camera, the victim was allowing us to view what was going on. We could see propane tanks, a gas tank light on top of it. So that's why we had to call it Hillsborough County because we didn't know what was going on, what type of explosives were going to go off. And that's why we evacuated nearby residents. Um, it was a large muster, as I go back to Pasco Fire Rescue, Hillsborough County Bomb Squad. Um, our SWAT team, our behavioral health team came out. Hostage negotiation. Um, we are fortunate that four hours later, you know, after a long negotiations, that's what I go back to. You had somebody who committed a crime and was in some type of mental health crisis. And so we did everything we could to have a peaceful resolution because he already showed violence, not only once towards the victim, with the domestic battery, he fired around while law enforcement was approaching. Then he was threatening to blow up the house and residence. So all this came together as one bad incident, but we we're fortunate because of the hard work and the negotiators, the SWAT team, everything, we had a peaceful resolution. But I want to state something right now. It's kind of going off of what happened today. Two weeks ago, we had the incident out on 301 where somebody was shooting at law enforcement. We had the incident today where somebody fired around law enforcement. I will say this, we will do everything in our power to protect our citizens. We will do everything in our power to protect the law enforcement officers in these type of situations. But we have an issue. There are 700,000 people in our county. The Pasco Sheriff's Office, and I'm not speaking on behalf of our rescue, but I can see it. We do not have the resources to handle all this. Our county has been booming for years but our resources are not keeping up with the growth. And I'll tell you this, as I was coming here to the scene, there were numerous calls for service going on. People do not stop calling us because they say, oh, there's something bad going on on holiday. I'm gonna not call the sheriff's office. Calls were going on. As I was coming here, I would actually was made a U-turn to go to a call to assist somebody, but then I got called up because Florida Highway Patrol was able to handle the situation. As I'm coming here, I hear somebody, a suicide threats in progress going on. There's domestic batteries going on. The calls keep coming in. So I'm begging our residents, we need your help. We need the resources because our county's growing. Every citizen in this county deserves to be protected. And we will do everything in our power to protect them. But we just need the resources to keep up with the growth. Because if anybody drives down any corridor in this county, you will see tons of houses going up. We need to be able to keep the resources up for law enforcement. And I say this as a citizen of Pasco County, we also need it for fire rescue so that our departments can serve every citizen in this county and protect everybody, because they deserve that. So with that being said, anything about the incident today I can talk about? Charges? Charges right now, well, we have them on uh, the violation of the protection order, and as towards shooting at law enforcement and everything else, those are still being worked on right now. Previous charges, so be in jail for I'm not sure about how long he's going to be in jail for, but we, with the domestic violence injunction against him, you know, I should hold him in jail. Oh, so.
what was that? History of all the shoes that you're wearing. We, we were looking through. I mean, they've been talking about it. That's it. Go back to it. These are, this is society now. This is not just Pasco County. This is all society. The social media, the stress on everybody, everything going on is escalating everything. Violence is out there. I mean, firing around the, uh, at law enforcement. Um, he had to, you know, I'm going to blow things up. People are not looking for peaceful resolutions. We're fortunate to get one, but that's what I said. We're very blessed to have unbelievable members in the Pasco Sheriff's Office, our behavioral health team, to de-escalate the situation. House of negotiations to de-escalate it. Had it not de-escalated, that's why SWAT's there. Um, but I do not know of a long history or anything. I just know that our negotiators are talking to them, and honestly, they did a hell of a job. I'm sorry. Why do you think he was in a mental health crisis and he was making these threats? I, I don't know why he was. I don't know why he was in the crisis he was in today. Um, just released from the jail, going to that house. Um, he told the members he had to go from the county jail back down here. Um, who knows what stress he's under? Uh, we'll find that out. But it's one of the situations that had he not committed a crime, you know, right now they would have been probably taking him to bank care behavioral, trying to get him assistance. But he committed a crime. The other person that, apologize, I'm gonna wait. The other person that often gets lost in these situations is the victim. Our fear is for that victim. Our fear is that God forbid, we did not, we weren't walking away from the situation because our fear is that he would come back and he'd do something. And that's why the whole criminal justice process should be enshrined to protect the victim. And that's what we're, we wanna work with the victim. Also our victim advocates were out there. Victim advocates did a great job too, working with the victim to assist her. We're going to continue to assist her, but I'm not sure exactly what got him in that crisis. Not knowing what he had planned, how fortunate, sorry, how fortunate was it that uh, the victim wasn't home when oh. he got there? So, you know, that's what I said. Thank God she had cameras. The angels were looking upon her that she just happened to look on her cameras and see that he was in that house. We're not sure. I mean, if he's, if he's willing to fire around, and that's what the investigation, we're trying to find out exactly where that round was fired, but he did fire around while law enforcement was approaching. He did say he was going to blow things up. I mean, who knows what he would have done to that victim, but we're very blessed by God that we didn't have another domestic violence killing in our community. Where was she? Was she not your home yet? Where was she? I'm sorry, what was that? Where was she at when he got to the house? Because she wasn't at the house. She wasn't at the house, but then I'm not sure where she was. She may have been at work. I'm not sure where she was, but our victim advocates met with her, talked to her, and we'll get her the resources going forward. Because I'll say this. The other part too is, and I don't know the history in this situation, I do know he was arrested before for domestic violence, but there should be classes taught at the high school level because unfortunately people, especially in domestic violence, they don't know how to go through the process. They don't know about how to get into injunctions. They know that, that's where our victim advocates stepped up, but that's something that's so critical is to help these people in these type of situations. But honestly, I'm not sure if she put that camera up because of the, what she went through, but kudos to her for protecting herself and taking those proactive steps. When he was taken into custody, did he share why he went to that house? No, I'm not. Yeah, I haven't talked to detectives yet as to what they're interviewing him with, but I just know that he came out peacefully, which was the best resolution for everybody. Was it, were these uh, gas tanks, propane tanks, were they all, this may be a dumb question, were they all filled with actual gas and propane? So what happened, you can actually see on the cameras, the two tanks, on top of it was a red container, and so after he came out, that's when Hillsborough, our robotics, Hillsborough County Fire Rescue are going in there. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, Hill, Hillsborough County Bomb Squad from Sheriff's Office. That's what the fear is as they're going through. They're going slow methodical because we don't know if there's booby traps. We don't know what else is going on. So until we know it's 100% safe, we're not going back and making sure the residents know what's going on. How important was it for you guys to evacuate the neighbors who live around where he was? Yeah, I mean, at the, at the moment, the deputies did a heck of a job. All they hear is a, a shot being fired. They take the tactical position. They find out quickly that he's saying he's gonna blow up, but he's got all the stuff. And they got those people out of there. It's the same type of situation at 301 last week, or two weeks ago, where the individual was firing rounds at law enforcement. We were able to pull them out of there. I mean, and then we go through all the steps and procedures. Okay, is everybody evacuated? What time are schools getting out? Or have the buses come in? Or are the buses coming out? Because we're fearful of kids walking down that street. So. Here's the sad reality. We do this so many times, unfortunately, that it almost becomes, okay, we know the procedures, go through the procedures step by step to make sure things are in place. But as I said, who knows if that neighbor was sitting there, who knows how he set them off, what could have happened, and what other gas lines might be in there. What's the easiest day for people getting back into their homes who've been evacuated? I think once we, once we know that that place is cleared, once we know that 
all the incinerator devices are fine, so maybe another hour or two, I'm not sure. His name? Uh, it's, uh, it's Eric, E R I C, Dykstra, D Y K S T R A. How important was that camera in the house for you guys to do what you did? So I was on the command bus, and I don't ever remember. I mean, sometimes we have to send robotics in there, and you know, we're trying to get a good view, but you literally just saw straight down two propane tanks, a red container on top of it. There's times you can actually see him sitting there with the gun, um, holding that gun. He said he had a shotgun there, so we had a one view straight down. He would get up to use the restroom or eat or do drugs, and so we couldn't see everything all the time, but that was, yeah. It's one of those things you wish you always had that type of camera on somebody, but in that type of situation, it, it helped us tremendously. Earlier, you asked for residents to help because you guys are you know, overworked with all these things. I mean, recommendations to the community I think everybody having, you know, cameras around your house that are good, but honestly, it comes down to people. We need more deputies. It's plain and simple. We need more deputies, we need more forensic techs. We need more civilians that are on the street helping us because the calls for service didn't stop. Even if people had cameras, which is a great idea, it doesn't stop the fact that there was somebody trying to commit suicide. There was somebody laying in a ditch on the Suncoast Expressway. There was other things that were going on across the county and we were holding a lot of calls for service. There was women being battered. We just don't have enough deputies. And so that's what I'm begging our citizens. Reach out to your commissioner and say, hey, get us the resources we need because these situations aren't going to slow down. Unfortunately, in our society, we're just gonna see more of them. All right, God bless everybody. Have a great day.